<laughs> we're back for Bench Racing Volume 11, and uh, we're here in uh, Shane Gowan's uh, palatial estate here at the Sunset Speedway Velocity 250 Campground. Shane is uh, kind enough to step up and allow us to use his humble abode here. So, this is the Oscar Modified Tour Edition of Bench Racing, and let's get things started. We'll start with the introductions here on my far left. You know him as El Presidente, the ever popular uh, de facto leader of Oscar two of the Perez. most two of the most popular <laughs> tours in the land, Oscar Modified Tour, Oscar Super Late Model Tour, head honcho, none other than Gabe, Dave Gainforth, back for his second time on bench racing. To my left, one of the uh, one of the newest acquisitions for the Oscar Modified Tour, making the move out of the Canadian Vintage Modifieds. It is Shane Stickle, complete with Hipster Toque, and on my right. Making his third, <laughs> third, third bench racing appearance right third. near the top of the list. He's been, yeah, we've Dang featured him a lot. Still he not getting paid. Not getting paid at all. <laughs> we might pay him on a hot dog, but we're not sure. None other than the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Davey Terry. So right here talking about the Oscar Modified Tour. You and I spoke before about the Oscar Super Late Models. That turned yep. into like a 45 minute episode. We never got enough time to really speak on the, on the Modified Tour. I want to know how the Modifieds got started and, and what, what the thought process was heading into having a tour to sort of feed guys into the super late models. Like when, when did you decide that you needed a feeder series to sort of to, to tour with the super late models? Uh, probably about two years ago. Uh, it was on, uh, not on Colors actually. I talked to a few people about uh, the Modifieds. And uh, there was two, two other Modified series at that time. Rick Warren's is at Mossport, the Delaware section. So in the off season I talked to uh, Rick Warren's and uh, they basically said they don't want my help. I said, okay, so I just dropped it. I wasn't going to do anything, actually. And then one night, about 10 o'clock that night, I heard that he was uh, talking a little smack about me, that we were still doing it, so I said, okay, let's do her. So I made a phone call at 10 after 10 at night to John Fletcher and a couple other people to help me with the rules. And uh, the following morning, I called the promoters. I had dates. So I had rules, I had dates. I didn't have one driver signed up. That's the rest of that's why we did it. So how many drivers started with the modified tour that you still have today? I think your retention is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, how many? Actually, I mean, Gary, everybody, Gary McLean. Everybody's here that was here the first year except for Josh is taking the part-time. Adam Adams, he get, uh, his partner got married, so he's taking the year off. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Crumby. He ended up having a, having a baby. He had a baby, got married. Life yeah. happens. And everybody else is here. I didn't, I didn't lose anybody. And I mean, when you look at the way short track racing is right now with, with, with tracks and series scrambling and tripping over one another to, to keep their drivers, to be able to say, well, we've had this modified tour for two years now and all we've done is add talent. Yeah. I mean, it says a lot. You, I mean, when you made your Oscar Modified debut, I loved it because in the weeks leading up to it, your post on social media, well, this, this is the Modified that nobody's talking about. Yeah. You, you came out of nowhere. I mean, you went from racing mini stocks in 2000 one to four. So 2004, you stopped racing mini socks, and then you essentially you didn't you didn't hop back in a race car until you bought your modified. What was it about the Oscar Modified Tour and, and what Dave Gainforth was putting together that made you want to get involved with it? It's just the whole thing was the cars look cool. That that was the deciding factor. Like the cars look cool. Like we wanted to build something, and we figured with the modifies they look totally badass, and we we can build something and then work towards something. We can build something that can get a sense of accomplishment out of it at the racetracks. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but your operation is, is small. It's what your father and, and yourself and that's about it or well, it, it, like dad and I spend a lot of time at the shop and we have uh, we have help from close close friends and, and family members like my cousin Chris and my brother Mike uh, in the car and then mom can sell the food and stuff like that. So we're pretty that's tight knit. Important. That's always yeah. important. Yeah. yeah that's always important. And uh, so we're pretty tight knit. We, you know, we we don't have a big fancy trailer or anything like that. We just we just take her in a car. We make it look good from the track. And sometimes it's fast. Sometimes it's not quite as fast. But I mean, when you were thinking about jumping into this, at any time did you think like I don't have I don't have enough help to do this. I don't have the the program necessary to make a commitment like this. We basically waited on sponsorship. That was the biggest thing. And then when Waysco came on board, um, it was the deciding factor on on getting a car and. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to get your cars like Mark. Yeah, we we. Then we were racing the van. That car, that car rolled into the shop the weekend of the Mega Speed Car Show, which was yes. the middle of March, yes. and we completely redid it. And we were still working on it through practice the day of 
So that car was it was a Troyer chassis that you purchased had Jeff Hanley. Nope. Uh, well, he helped us out. He gave us he gave us a ton of advice and stuff like that to get the car ready. But it stayed in our shop. We did everything ourselves uh, right off the bat. And then uh, it wasn't until this past year where he he took it. You ran stock Troyer the first year, right? Yeah. Yep. Just so you didn't have to reclip it or anything to to, to no. get on track. Because I think that's important. Like we need to let guys know that you can go to Western New York. I mean. Let me tell you right now, if you're not familiar with Western New York, the Western New York pavement scene right now is in trouble. Big trouble. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. The SST modifies, Sportsman modifies, whatever you want to call them. Spencer Speedway, Holland Speedway, Lancaster, Shangri-La, all of them are suffering for car counts. There are chassis available everywhere. If you're watching this, this, this video and thinking, I want to get involved with the mod modified tour, go on Racing Jump. You can get a chassis for free and, and or for free. You can get a chassis for for a good price. Yeah. Not for free. Yeah. Take if you it got, easy. Uh, if, you got a rich, yeah. if you got a if you got a rich yeah. daddy like Shane Stickler, you can get a car for free. <laughs> oh, that's what I mean. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can get a car for cheap, and you can get involved with a modified tour. You don't have to do any major adjustments like what the Terry team did. I mean, it, it's worth checking out. Now, I know with you being the salesman that you are, you 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 went to the short tracks. You mentioned in your other bench racing episode, yeah. you went to guys and talked to guys and yeah. said. What you're racing right now, oh, that's all right, but you should come and race for me. I, I do it all the time. I did it to him. Yeah. I, that's my next question. 2012 Vintage Modified Champion. He was at the car show, and every five minutes he'd walk by, I want one of these, I want one of these. Which was one of the most it, intense championship battles. Right, yeah. In, in that series history, I believe. Yeah, we like, I was going into it that year. Car was all done up nice. I was at the Performance World Car Show, Mega Speed Car Show it is now. And uh, yeah, me and Corey Jones were there repping the club, and then I just wander over and they were wrapping uh, Burroughs car, right? Burroughs car, yeah. And I just I look at them go to think, what the hell is this thing, man? And what's going on? And I think I was over there every 10 minutes and then dad came to visit me at the show. Come over here and, yeah. and we're looking at it. I knew oh. I had them. Yeah. And, just reeling them in. Yeah, just reeling me in. And oh, they're, they're just as affordable to run as a hobby car, this and that, right? So had my wheels spinning and then uh, kind of put it on the back burner and went and ran for my championship, gave it my all and then I, I think I pretty much knew when I rolled it on the trailer that night I was going to be making a change. It was just kind of, we just talked about it and talked about it and I waited last minute. But uh, again, it was a lot like what Davey said, the cars are so cool looking. I wanted to run a car with a big Hoosier slick on it. Didn't, open wheels for me, I love open wheel. Um, I wanted to be a part of the Oscar name, love that. And yeah, so he had me at uh, he had me at the show pretty much. So, so like I told you, let's go. The guys that had trouble tonight, I'm at their trailer. Yeah. They, 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 if you're watching, if you're watching this video right now, if you were at the Velocity 250 tonight, you know the Vintage Modifieds, the Vintage Modifieds team, I love you, but you did not have your best performance tonight. This old boy over here was talking to some of the guys that wanted up their cars, and you might see someone that was on the CBM roster in 2013 run an Oscar Modified in 2014. Remember this interview opening night next year because you might start to connect the pieces like, oh, now I remember what they were Dave talking knows about. Doing. Oh, yeah, I, you know, you're all right. These business cards are pretty yeah, cheap. I'll yeah, no doubt, I'll yeah. But it's not just a gimmick. Like, it's good racing and it's great people, too. Like, yeah. it's, it's, you know, just, it's just one, once you show people what we're made of and, and you know, yeah. what kind of group of people we are at the track, yeah. they're hooked. So, well, I bought my car and like my Troy or Heap or whatever and rolled it in and the first message I got from you is no offense but you're gonna have a lot more fun in Oscar than what you came from and then he said again no offense but I didn't really know what he was talking about and what a great group of guys and like, I probably emailed you ten times last year. Yeah, yeah, just what yeah, what you were talking about me. Yeah, you so, doing? so yeah. your car yet? Yeah, did you get a car? And yeah. then finally I said I sent him a picture and I said check it out and yeah. like, So you oh. went sort of the opposite direction. Davey sort of got his and, and made it work right off the bat, whereas you sort of bought a Troyer and I guess almost custom fitted to, to suit your needs and, and you went through it almost nose to tail. I mean, you stripped it bare, did you not? Yeah, we stripped it down, reclipped it, but I'll be honest, I give a lot of credit to Davey and uh, and his dad, Pete, um, and Al Haringa, who also, Al. Al is a big part of my racing program. He's not at every race, but um, you guys probably think I'm addicted to my cell phone, but I'm texting him. He's, he's my own official crew chief. I can't thank him at all. Yeah, Twitter, whatever. But even um, when, when our car was at Jeff's, like Al would come over and, and see what we were doing and stuff like that. Right. So he's a big part of both of our programs, I'd say. So I'm, I learned a lot from Davey and what he was doing. Um, we both have Troyer chassis. Um, I got mine late in the season, and they were just in the process of reclipping theirs. And, 
heat and his dad said, you know, I really think this is the way to go in the long run. There might be some headaches early on, which there are with a, a recap Troyer car, but in the long run, they should be good. So I kind of just followed his lead with that. Um, but I didn't want to, if that was the way to go in the end, I would have rather just missed the first two or three races like I did and come out with a good piece. I didn't want to come out there and um, I like to be competitive, so I didn't want to just come out and do that. So. Now, you went with a, a Troyer and ended up having McCall redo. So yours is a Troyer by McCall. That's a whole other aspect that makes the, this tour so fascinating. Is you can start with, with someone that started his life as a Troyer and has been redone. We've got MRE, we've got Hanley, we've got Striker. I mean, and so. Me too. Yeah. And, and DB race cars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so what? what why did you choose to go with Mike McCall to reclip your your Troy and sort of put his own spin on your mm. uh, on your front clip? Well, originally when Al came down, we were we were I, I had the car in my shop and I said, look, look what I bought, right? Come, he said, yeah, I can come down and I'll help you out. And we uh, we had it all apart, measuring it, and uh, we were talking about doing spindles originally, and then we got in contact with Pete. And, uh, and we did call Jeff, and Jeff was right in the process, and, uh, and he was keeping the Davies race, uh, like the race team there. And, uh, and um, then I also talked to J.R. Fitzpatrick, who deals with McCall a lot, and he said he had just reclipped the car for him, which ended up getting sold, and someone's in the process of doing that car up. And uh, he said Mike's a great guy to work with, um, actually pretty affordable, because um, it's got a, a super late clip on it that like, produces quite a bit of a late model clip. Um, and he thought maybe, JR said maybe go give him a try. And so when I talked to Al and uh, they talked to Mike, Mike was really happy to do it. That was the first uh, retrofit he's done on a Troyer. And uh, just the excitement that people were getting and uh, yeah, like I would love to do it. And uh, and like like I said, Al's a big part of my program, but so is Mike McCall. Um, even those two behind my back are talking all week. And then they call me up and do this to the car, do that to the car. And, uh, and you know, Mike, like, McCall, they build a, a great, great product, and so to have them a part of uh, a part of my uh, package, it's, it's really good. Now I'll I'll go ahead and, and slip you a little bit of a, a little bit of a rumor if you're watching this. Not a rumor, it's a fact. But uh, if you're wondering about the car that Shane mentioned, that was originally a J.R. Fitzpatrick car, that's been sold to somebody else, it's going to run it in 2014. I won't name names. I won't put anyone on blast. But he's currently running the Delaware Speedway Super Stock Division. He's doing really, really well for himself, and you'll see him with an Oscar modified. 2014. Going over to my right, tell me about Jeff Haley, what your relationship is with him, because I know he's done a lot of work to your car. Can you sort of bring us into your thought process, your decision process when you decide to take your car to Jeff? Well, I kind of got to know him uh, like through work and stuff like that. Uh, doing kind of odd jobs and stuff like that for him. And, uh, I, before we even had the car, I'd go down there just to learn, just to watch and stuff like that. And, you gotta, you know, you gotta speak. You gotta speak loud. It's like you're trying to tell us a sexy secret. Okay. Tell, um, tell the whole world if you think that we're handsome. You can, you can tell yeah, everybody. That, that no, we roll. Day. We roll. We don't edit anything. No, I, I, st I still like going down there just to learn, uh, pick up advice. That's mostly it. Now, now I have something that I can apply to, and, and it works well that way. And uh, you know, it, that's basically it. I, I love to learn. I love um, like seeing what other people do and uh, apply it to how we work on our cars and stuff like that. So. Uh, that's mostly it. I learn a lot from uh, learn a lot from a lot of guys. Now, when you and I spoke this afternoon, and you said, "All right, well, what are, what are we going to talk about in bench racing?" I said, "I have no idea. I don't like to plan this stuff. We just sort of shoot from the hip. That's what makes it so much fun." Mm -hmm. But one thing I want to talk about is where you're headed with the future of this tour, because right now, I mean, you've got guys' attention. You know, guys are looking at your series. If they don't have a car right now, they're mm -hmm. thinking, like, how much money is it going to cost to come and run? Mm -hmm. You know, how, can I do the tour? Can I go and acquire a chassis and easily put it together and be competitive? As far as rule packages go, it seems as though amongst your, your tour, your roster, you're about 50-50 split with what guys want to do heading into the future. What are the options, and, and which side are you weighing towards? Which side are you leaning towards, I should say? What am I leaning towards? What are you leaning towards yeah, right yeah. now? <laughs> I'm looking towards the future. Uh, most racers, it's just the force of habit. They think one year down the road, two years down the road. I gotta think five years down the road. Where are we gonna be? Anybody that's coming into our series, they're gonna buy a new car. They're not gonna buy a car that was built ten years ago, fifteen years ago. I gotta start slowly meeting, bringing in, grandfathering in somehow the newer stuff without radical changes. They're costing people thousands of dollars in the off season. Just slowly. 
it in. Bring it, bring it up more up to date. It, as more people come into the series, they're going to buy new stuff, or they're going to go to New York and buy the stuff that's there. I got to make it work here eventually. No. And it's not hard to do. It's just baby steps. I got, I got to weed the, I got to weed off the older cars to get into the newer stuff. So now, obviously, the the, the easy follow-up question that's like, the way that you're headed, does that stand to put you know these older law law mac cars and the older ward cars? I mean, are they? Are we sort of pushing them towards extinction, maybe quicker than guys thought they would be uh, thought they would be headed? No, I don't no, I, I don't think so. think so. I think they'll still work. I, the changes I want to make is, is I'm not reinventing the wheel. It's, it's it's small little things, and I'm slowly getting through people's heads. Ride height. Everybody's scared about ride height. Who cares? I'm not. Who cares? Everybody. I, I look, we're better at three, bro. Do you want to know that? Who cares? Everybody's car sits at four when it's sitting still. When it's on the track, it's two. Who cares how pretty this one sits still? I don't care. And Barney Harris was almost almost five. Yeah. You know, so brakes that that brakes is another thing. It was still almost blown off. I think. You know, so yeah. there's just small. There's very two or three small things that really just separate the older cars to the newer cars. And, and I don't think by bringing in the newer stuff, it's going to obsolete the old stuff either. I don't think it's going to. Be soft, I really don't. If, if you if you look at if you pull your fan base, mm -hmm. the number I think the number one topic over the last five years that fans have, have wanted to suggest is trying to get a cross border series going with the super late models. Yeah. Now let's just be perfectly blunt. The way the rules are right now, God knows the folks in the Midwest are changing things every season. So what they are right now, maybe we'll get closer in three years. But mm -hmm. right now, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Oscar, the way it is right now. The Midwest clubs do not want to work with Oscar. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've never approached them. And they I mean, haven't, they haven't I mean, approached me right. either, so it, I, The way it's looking right now is with the super late models, the cross-border series, won't work. probably not going to happen. No. But the modifieds, the way the Oscar rules are right now, and the way the SST sportsman SK rules are in Western New York, not far off. They're not far off. i got a guy coming tomorrow that raced at Lancaster. Really? And, and I've never seen his car, and it's not. Does it meet our rules 100%? No. If I tried to work with him to see it, to give it a test, absolutely. You know, I maybe I should have told this earlier to everybody. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Andy J. Oh, Koyak, by the way. Everybody oh, shocked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. shocked. It's. I think it's going to work. I talked to. I went to John Fletcher. The man knows a lot about race cars. He's not going to steer me wrong. I know what this guy has, and I think it's going to work. I, they, you know, does he have a two-inch right height? Yeah. Is his left side percentage lower than or less than what our guys is? Yes. Will that offset the two? Maybe. I, mean, that, I have to experiment. I gotta, until I see the product on the track and see what happens, it's the only way I can tell. It's just going to work. So nothing Three. wrong with that. So I, I, the guy's coming tomorrow. Yeah. And I mean that. And I opened the door for the yeah, phone and said, I want to come. I said, okay. I'll, make, I'll try to make it work. Infinite possibilities. Because yeah. Jan Koyak comes from a modified racing family. Anyway, if you're, if you're an open world modified fan, Jan Koyak is right up there with, you know, the, 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 all the all the bigger names, you know, all the old blue drivers, all the guys that drove the Mystic Missile. I mean, Jan, the Jan Koyak name goes back before there was a NASCAR with a modified tour. Um, I'd love to be able to tell you where Andy fits into that family tree. I don't exactly no, I don't know. know. I'm going to figure it out, but I don't know oh, right yes, now. I didn't know the bottom line is if he comes up here and runs well, that word's going to get back to the guys that are fed up with Western New York. Well, that's, a, that, that's exactly. That's the bottom line, right? As a promoter, that's what I'm looking at. Exactly. I'm looking at getting cars. Into here. A couple years down the road, make us bigger. Let, let, is, is there a chance we could see Oscar promoting a show in Tioga Center, New York, at Shangri La Two Speedway, uh, uh, at Holland Speedway, not at Special Speedway? Not like crowds still are bad. <laughs> I mean, is, is, there, is, there a, is there a way to do it? Is I mean, there a way? That, uh, there's a way to do anything. Yeah, absolutely, I can do it. Absolutely, if the money's there and I can make it work, absolutely. No, obviously the promoter's all right with it. As you, as a driver, if we start getting into cross-border stuff. Is that when the costs start getting crazy? And that is that when you need to start backing back your taking back your program, or would you be interested in something like that? Well, obviously it's going to be it's going to drive the cost up, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be there all the time. Like if we do one or two shows throughout the season, it probably won't be too bad. But as a special, it's kind of like how uh, kind of like how the Hobby Club used to go to Kalamazoo, right. uh, yeah. Holland. Um, like they used to go to Berlin back then. They did just go to Berlin. And even they came down to Delaware once or twice this yes. year. Yeah. And they would yeah. they would do Berlin and Kalamazoo in one trip in one weekend. And uh, you know, something like that isn't a big yeah. deal. Really. Well and 
and like even we've had a couple of double header shows here where we've had to stay overnight and like you're really just talking about your driving time accommodations are a whole lot more in the states or whatever so um, it's more just like your, your hauling time just like comics yeah that, 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 exactly and, that yes. all yeah. and for a guy like uh like say justin tamello to drive down there it'd still be a shorter drive than it would be for Buffalo. justin jones to come yeah. from sault ste marie right. yeah. Yeah. yeah and Absolutely. justin jones yeah. is talking about wanting to do a full tour yeah. in 2014 i mean that and that creates infinite possibilities. So I'll throw it over to you as a driver. I'm gonna get, I want both of you guys to weigh on this. If you had a wish list, what would be at the top of it for the Oscar Modified Tour in the short term, heading into 2014? I mean, if you if you could have everyone's attention in the meeting, let's face it, you got ventures right now, you got everyone's attention right now. Do you got one thing on your wish list that you'd love to, to express to the rest of the tour? Uh, I just think four piston calipers would be, would be one thing. No, I'm, I'm just saying that because a lot of the cars come with them. Um, That's exactly why. And it, it's not exactly, it's not a speed advantage, really. It's just, it, it would actually be cheaper for us to run them because we go through pretty fast and crazy. Yeah. The first of all, uh, the Hal I don't think people really go fast and modified like are. You gotta be able to stop. So yeah. You gotta be able but, to stop. But that, that's just one of the things. Like we we had to cater to some of the cars that were already in existence, and that's just that's one of the things that you were uh, explaining earlier. We're just gonna move towards, and uh, we'll get to them eventually. But uh, no, that's that's it. So that's top it. of the wish list. Well, ideally, I agree with Davey. Like if if you want to build the series and you want new drivers to come in, the the way I've been trying to sell the series and. And Dave comes to me every time we race with the hobby car, so who did you recruit today? Like, just, just as a joke, you know, but I'm talking to those guys I race with. Um, there's no better sales pitch than go to the States, buy a Troyer, and put a 602 crate in it, and you're racing with us for 10 grand. We're under it, right? And the way you run it. And uh, if, if we could get it to that point, like, we're going to have 30 cars next year, right? Or next year, two years. So, uh, and I mean, and me, I re my car, and maybe that wouldn't have been necessary. I got the two piston great calipers, just like Davey, and it would have been nice to run my car the way it is. But it's it's about building the club, and, uh, and I definitely think that's the way to go for the future. Right? That's like the hobby car issues, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. Some of, some of their rules are yeah. they're up to date with their brakes or something. I sold. I, don't but no, I sold two <laughs> sets. Of, I sold two, sold two sets of them this year. I wish I had them now, but because I'll probably be putting them on this winter. But. Yeah, so I think to build a club down would be important. One driver <laughs> in Ontario. And you knew I was going to ask, I mean, you knew I was going to ask you this question. Yeah. If you miss out on our Oscar bench racing segment when we had Dave Game for the Kelly Balson, the blueprint Mike Wallace was Dave Game for his choice Guess to right. hop in a super late model. I might have been modified from colors. So is that, all right, so <laughs> full time 2014, go out into the, stay away from Sunset, don't touch my roster here. Go somewhere else. I'm, already, no, I'm, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm already taking them. Go ahead and pick <laughs> one driver that you want to put in an open wheel modified, ideally in 2014. Who is it? Anywhere in Ontario. Come back to me. Give me a minute. Okay, I have one. I'll, one minute. Give can me I ask minute. you another question while we wait for right. the first one? All right. Drivers are another issue where drivers are almost split. Some guys like the schedule the way it is right now. Uh -huh. Some think it's a little bit hectic and would like to see you scale back to where you were in 2012. Yes. Now I know. Obviously, it's it's just business. The better races Oscar puts on, the more drivers you have interested, yep. the more promoters want you, yep. the more dates they want you to have. Yep. So at the same time, the drivers want you to scale back. They don't want to travel every week. The costs are going up. Yep. That puts you at a bit of a junction. Where are you headed for 2014 in terms of the schedule? I'm scaling it back. Scaling it back scaling to where it, it was in 2012? Well, how many was there in 2012? 12. 12. 12. 12. 12 is going to be tough. 13, I could probably pull off. I could probably pull it off. The problem is, the, 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 the demand is there, and it, it, I hate to say, to say I, no. I hate to say no, but I'm gonna have to say no. I'm gonna have to sit down and look at the speedways that make sense for Oscar to be there, from a business standpoint and from my sponsor standpoint, and, and race at those tracks. Now that's what it's gonna come down to. Is it too forward of me to ask what what tracks right now off the top of your head? What tracks make sense in a business sense for Oscar? And you, I mean, you could say no, you could say pass, but right now, I mean, what tracks in a business sense makes make good business for Oscar. The ones I can get the drivers to come and race at. Which would be? Sunset, Barry, Peterborough, Kawartha. Sobble was hard. Clambro was hard. We get cars to go there. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not lying. Everybody knows what our car yeah. counts were there. Yeah. Uh, you know, for business wise, for me to sell this series, those are the four tracks I need to be at because that's where the people are at. Is, is it just, 
when it comes to Flamborough, I don't that, know what it is. I was gonna, I don't want I you don't to think that we're picking on them because no. we're not. Is it just, I mean, Kelly Balson's quote when he was on bed chasing time and space, and I think it makes so much sense why that's, Worth and Sunset work for Oscar. Is that why Flambro doesn't work for Oscar? No, because we went to Barney last week with 18 modifieds. It's one of the raised 30 uh, laps, and, and there was no issues. I don't know what it is about Flambro. We have what? Two cautions. Two cautions. Just yeah. single car space. Yeah, yeah there, 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 there was nothing. We go to Bar we go to Flambro, and we, we crash under the pace laps almost. Like I don't, I don't understand. I don't know what it is. That track is. Just, I don't know. You know what though? I, the, even in the hobby car I found when at the CBM, sorry, when I first got into it three years ago, like it seemed like a pretty good racer track. I practiced there every Tuesday, like I felt like that was almost my home track. And um, a year ago, even two years ago, it almost feels like the track has went away a little bit. There's not a lot of in the open wheel cars anyway. There's not a, a outside group. There's not a lot of passing. And, you know, so you get it. You get maybe a guy uh, starting out front that's not not as fast or whatever, and people get rammy and it just causes wrecks. And yeah. that that seems that's where we were at with the, the vintage mods anyway. And it, we didn't put on a very good show there last night. But, but that so. seem, it seems like every class ended this yeah. year. I heard the gold rush was the same yeah. kind of problem. So every, we had a problem. We were there a few weeks ago. I, I, yeah. don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. And I'm not bashing Flambro. Like, Neither around I'm just, forever, but for even as a racer, it's, it's tough. It's a very tough track to get around. So, what you have going, and I mean, it, I shouldn't say what you have going because the Rick Wolin Memorial was around before the Oscar tour. The yeah. Oscars helped make the Rick Wolin Memorial even bigger than it was. And, you know, Julia, Julia Wolner's tour stuff was huge this year. What she was able to do with the lap sponsors. It's a great show. The Supers have the Biederman, mm -hmm. the Modifieds have the Wolner. Mm -hmm. They sort of share all the other crown jewels in terms of auto colors and the velocity. Yeah. Is there is there room even with a scaled back schedule to maybe add an additional big race for the modifies with the more the more talent you're bringing in, the, the higher car counts? Is there room for another maybe a, a big money race or an extended distance race for the Oscar modified tour? I'm looking at one, yes. Yeah, more down east, like in the eastern market probably. Try to do something fourth next year. Yeah, fourth would probably be the best bet. Yeah, like, and yeah. they don't have an eastern was anymore, so to uh, do a to do a big event there would be yeah, awesome. Like, this season's racer was a huge success. Yeah, it was, but yeah. Well, he told me straight up we had this many people in the entire series at our race. I was there for both shows. I'd say Oscar probably had more. Well, he would so. be right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, he can't be honest with me because he still needs to negotiate. Yeah, I got to sit down with him yeah, one day, so, you know, he knows yeah. exactly. Dollars yeah, make yeah. sense, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, so that's great. So, all right, so we've learned, we've, learned, we've learned what tracks make business sense for Oscar. We've learned where you where you want to go for a big race. We've learned who you want to. Yep. What we haven't learned is who you want to put in the mod five. Uh -huh. You've stalled long enough, game for it. Look that camera right in the eye and through the magic of YouTube. Go, just look at the camera right now and tell me who the one who's the one modified driver or who's the one driver, sorry, that you want to put in the mod five for 2014. Well, I heard this. I heard this is today. He's been asking today. He races here. He, 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 he drives the 76. Super stock or street stock, whatever it is here. He's talking about it. I would love to see him in our suit. Jaden laps it. Jaden laps it. I don't you know. You should probably learn his I name. I should learn his name if yeah. he's going to race with us next year. But yes, I think he'd be an awesome asset for the series. Or the Zardo kids. They're, they're both both of them. Even Stop racing. and Tom showing an interest. Yeah, Gary Elliott. Yeah, Tom and those guys would yeah. be big. He's down at the International Hall of Fame today. He's going to induct it. He's yeah. going to be a rookie of the year. Not yeah. next year. He, wants, he wants to run the fight. If Oscar comes back and runs five, Shows at sunset. Tom said on bench racing, it's almost, yeah, it's yeah. almost like the idea that he would come and run the five shows at sunset. I'll get him at court, though. I'll get him out there anyway. I don't think you'll get him at flame, bro. Okay, I'll make, make that bet right now. You want to? He, he might be there by himself, anyways. I'll make that bet right now. <laughs> you won't I get a flame, bro. I don't think stopping Tom Walters would take an Oscar modified, a jalopy, or anything else to flame speed speedway. Like. That I'll bet you twenty dollars right now. I bet you twenty-five over right there. 25 that you're not a Flamborough? Yeah. I'm not picking on Flamborough Speedway. I love, I love, I love Flamborough oh, Speedway. I'm not picking on Flamborough Speedway. I'm not betting against Flamborough Speedway's success. I'm simply saying that oh, okay. Stop and Tom Walters would not nah, take an Oscar modified Flamborough. I needed some gas money. That's you, yeah, you needed, you needed money for the cab ride home. We're getting a little bit long on time. Final thoughts. This is always the fun part. I'm just going to turn it over to you. Anything. And don't tell like it's a, that's a sexy secret. Look that camera right in the eye. And tell me your final thoughts. Anything you want about the Oscar Modified Tour. Anything interesting of note. If you want to learn more, just come to the track and ask anybody. Like everyone's, everyone's more than willing to help each other out, give you information, this that. 
like I'm, I'm always chatting with guys that are interested in the series. That's it. Don't be afraid to ask. That's all I guess. You're nervous. You're nervous. You're like, man, what am I gonna say? Not your well, you know what, Davy, Davy kind of opened me up for that one. I'm a new driver this year, and I was probably spamming his Twitter all winter and got a ton of help from him and his dad. Um, Gary McLean, first day I was at the track, wandered over, got to change that, got to change that, this is what you're doing for tires, this is the best guy in the series, right? Like, doesn't even know who I am, um, Davey's right. Um, as far as getting help in a series, like, it's overwhelming. Um, every day people are coming and, uh, and uh, giving me more information, trying to get me better and better. Um, I think that's the club, really yeah, maybe I'm, I'm just <laughs> terrible, so that's why, if they feel sorry for me, that's why, so, it's pretty yeah, um, but I really honestly think this is the future of Ontario Oscar Oscar racing, the super lates, the modifieds. I think the modifieds are going to be at 30 cars sooner or later. Like, there's a bunch of cars just sitting waiting to come up once the rules uh, get finalized. Um, ton of interest, ton of interest from the CVM guys, everyone. So, um, I just couldn't be happier as a driver where I'm at right now, and I I don't think I'll ever be uh, making a change. So, uh, um, it's an awesome series. Now, there's no question that to build a brand for a tour and to build interest I mean you need different winners yeah I'm not taking shots at anybody but there's been a stranglehold I mean the NCATS has a stranglehold with Ranger Kennington and Steckley they yep. need a new champion they need new winners Gary McLean's on his way to his second straight championship he wins races like it's his job and he's earned it I mean he mm -hmm. comes by it honestly but the Oscar modified tour needs another driver to step up and and and, and do something and show outsiders that you can buy a car and be competitive because right now I'm thinking I can buy a car and if my name's not Gary McLean I might be in trouble I might be in for a steep learning curve it's a long lead up to an easy question who's going to be the next first time winner on the Oscar Modified Tour well boom it's like I'm taking you one way and then you're down a yeah, sharp like, turn in the whoa. hallway and like oh yeah, wow but. championship or single race no single race we'll start with baby steps you had, you had first time winners this year I think with DeMello and Kernan. I'll be honest, it's not because he's in here. I think Dave will be the next guy. I think, he, I think he's got a shot. I think he's got a good shot tomorrow. I've had a lot of people. It just keeps the floor under pressure. I've had a lot yeah. of people tell me, for my, for my money, and I said it on bench, I said, I think Shane's going to be the next first time winner. I said that way back. Shane's running very well this weekend, too. It's hot. Shane's good at sunset, but Dave's good at sunset, too. I was playing off Days of Thunder, just on the misery of Ramirez today. When Dave's not having the whole. His whole face rearranged on the front of that car with the inside retaining yeah. wall. He's fast as sun. I think either one of these guys. I think he'll win tomorrow, actually. If you look at who the future of this tour is, it's Shane Stickle, Davey Terry, and Matt Barton. And it's Westwood. not. I think Mike Westwood. Mike Westwood. Is, I mean, Westwood. Yeah, he's shot a lot of speed at Barton. I think Brandon Bowen's coming along. I love the in house chassis work for Westwood. That, that endears something to me. Well, that guy's a racer. Anything he can put his ass in, he's in. He could be yeah. Like even Brad. Like Jeff Wall has that card. Yeah. Turn a little ball this year. I think oh, next, yeah, I think next card, year, yeah. mark my word, I'll you go back and review this little tape next year. Do you want to look it right in the eye? We'll have seven different feature winners next year. Whew. That's a big number. Yeah. Not a big number. Hopefully I'm three of them. Does that mean Gary's <laughs> retiring? No. No. I have the confidence. This was a three-year mm. plan. It is. And I figured it's going to take the new guys at least three years to catch up to those guys that have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. So I think next year, seven different feature winners. How many have we had this year? Five? I bet you if you go back and look, it seems like Gary and them win a lot. Well, Gary and Brent's and Brent's won. Like yeah. Brian's won. Yeah. Mellow's won. Cox. Cox and won. Uh, Alcala won. Gee, we're up to six already. Keen to get these guys to come yeah. out full time. And you thought I was out of the line for seven? No, yeah, it's seven. No, seven. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. We're getting long on time though. I want to. We, we're going to do this again because it's a good group of guys. The Oscar modified tour. I mean, we, we. I could sit here and talk for two hours. There's, there's we haven't even skimmed the surface of the things I want to ask you, fellas. Follow them on Twitter if you want to get involved with the series. If you want to even learn more about the cars, this is one of the most talkative dudes in the sport. Follow him on Twitter at Davy Terry. I haven't met, I haven't memorized your Twitter handle yet, so you're gonna have what's what's the Twitter handle? At it's Shane Stickle. I'm embarrassed now. At Shane Stickle. That's a complicated. Then we we tweeted on Friday like what? Well, I, 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 I have I follow you on Twitter, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I just put at S H and then it fills oh, in yeah, the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so that's not you know my memory is yeah. horrible. Right, at right. Oscar Prez. At Oscar Prez with a Z. Because he's 
Thanks, edgy like and that. sassy and hippie <laughs> thing. He's a sassy one. Yeah. Follow me on Twitter at it's Spencer Lewis for all sorts of uh, racing news, rumors, gossip, hilarity. I retweet a lot of the Davy posts, so I sort of it's, I think it's I, not all racing related. It's hilarious. It's it's comic <laughs> and also follow our camera woman <laughs> at C Set Thirty Three. Because if this is the 11th episode of bench racing, I think she's probably she's Crystal Doucette has shot about six hours of bench racing. She got steady standing hands. perfectly still, erect, surgical. <laughs> that's like <laughs> I'd be Crystal Doucette could do open heart surgery if you gave her a really? manual and enough nice. times. She's she got real steady good hands. At operation, bro. Nice. At CB Set 33. So for all of us from bench racing, thank you so much for the support. This is number 11. We'll be back with volume 12 real soon. I just have no idea who it's going to be. You'll like it, though. I promise. Tell your friends about it. Share it on Facebook. Retweet it. We appreciate it. For Dave Gamer, Shane Stickle, Davey Terry, and Crystal Doucette, I'm Spencer Lewis. Thank you for watching.